Today I want to pick up the continuation of the mini-series, Blockages to Healing. Today I want to talk about a huge blockage to healing that was probably one of my main blockages, which is control. As Samantha alluded to in one of our uh, series with her, I was a control freak. I am no longer the same level of a control freak. I am a recovering control freak. But I still have some controlling tendencies. And early on in recovery, I will tell you, I tried to utilize the controlling tendencies that I had in business and ministry and sports and utilize them with Samantha. And one of the most toxic things that I did was try and control Samantha's recovery. If you are going to struggle with control, then you're going to have to be prepared that whether you're an unfaithful spouse or a betrayed spouse, control is a blockage to healing in every sense of recovery. How it plays out is like this. If you're an unfaithful and you're unsure about the mindset of where your betrayed spouse is, you try and control it. I know for me, I would say, how are you doing? What's going on? How are you feeling? Well, I'm struggling today. Why are you struggling? Well, I'm, I'm dealing with reminders, Samantha would say. Well, you got to control your thoughts and take them captive and stop thinking about it and let's do some stuff or what can we do? And she would grow claws. She would want to scratch my eyes out because I was micromanaging her recovery because I was so insecure. I was kind of fusing with her uh, on every little moment. If she was up, I was up. If she was down, I was down. If she would, you know have a reminder or a trigger and it was pure chaos and it was all because of me trying to control her recovery and as you may or may not have heard it pushed her further away if you are going to be a control freak especially as an unfaithful you are not going to help the situation you're going to push your spouse further and further away now alternatively if you're a betrayed spouse and you struggle with control. I promise you it's going to be very frustrating if you try and control your unfaithful spouse's recovery. If you try and mom them and, and try and control, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Where are you doing? What are you doing? Are you, are you going to your accountability group? You know it starts at 7. It's 6.30. Are you going to leave? When are you going to leave? Are, are, did you call so-and-so? All those things are going to push your unfaithful spouse further away and they're going to frustrate you because you're going to feel like you can't control him or her and it's going to backfire and create more division because trying to control your spouse's recovery creates division, creates a, a sense of isolation and communicates more shame to the unfaithful and it also causes the betrayed to feel frustrated because they're trying to control their unfaithful spouse's recovery and it's backfiring and then they feel like, well, maybe they don't want it and they're not getting it and they're not safe and they don't really want to be married again and now we're off to the races, right? And as an unfaithful trying to control your betrayed spouse's recovery, it doesn't go the way you want it and then you're like, oh my gosh, we're going to divorce and why am I doing this and I shouldn't be doing this anyway and now we're off to the races and so we get on the treadmill of chaos, confusion, and frustration all because we're trying to control each other when in reality the best thing that we could do is focus on controlling our own recovery. You see, for me, what was incredibly toxic was when I tried to control Samantha's recovery and then I couldn't and it backfired and then I wasn't okay. You see, I was so kind of insecure and, and even in my own way codependent that when Samantha wasn't okay, I wasn't okay, all because I was reading into things in the pure kind of moment. It's kind of like when we read our spouse's diary or journal, and we read this entry for a day where they lose their mind, they're bitter, they're, they're thinking about divorce and what a worthless SOB we are and how we'll never change and all these things, and then we read it and we want to give up hope and we want to freak out, when in reality that is a moment. That is where they are at right then. It is not the totality of who they are or your recovery. It's a bad moment, but we take that moment and we run with it and we think that is all of recovery and all of our situation when no, it was just a bad mood and they were very 
angry and pissed off, and so they vented in their journal. Now you're reading it thinking that that's how they truly feel, when in reality that was a feeling and that was a mood and that was a moment, and it's not the totality of who they are, what they're feeling, or what they want to do in their recovery. One of the best things you can do if you're a control freak is one of the worst things in your mind, probably, which is surrender. You can't control your spouse anyway, man. It's a complete illusion. The more I tried to control Samantha, the more it backfired. The more that I simply pulled back, and when she was having a difficult moment, said, honey, look at me. I, I know. I am so sorry that you're feeling what you're feeling. It's all my fault. What can I do? Can I do anything? No. You can get out and not talk to me and leave me alone. Okay? Um, would you like me to take the kids and, and kind of get out of the house so you can have a quiet house? Fine. Okay. That happened a million times. And initially, I would say, but why don't I stay? Why don't we talk? Can I pray for you? Can I hold you? Can I read scripture? Can I just bit, see with, sit with you? Do you want to hit me? Do you want to punch me? What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Dude, nightmare. It would only elevate her levels of frustration, hatred, and rage to stab me in the eye or the heart with a pencil. Don't do that. Communicate graciously. Maybe even have a sign that the betrayed spouse, when they're raging, flooding, or whatever, can give you where you know, ooh, it's go time. If I say anything else, I'm going to be stabbed. I mean, there's a point where Samantha would throw up her hands like this, and when she did that, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to stay in the moment, but I hate coughing in the middle of doing this, is that when she did that, Rick taught me, if I say anything else, I'm going to wound her, and I'm going to set ourselves back. And so when she did that, I would say, okay. And at that point, then, I would just do whatever I needed to do. Take the kids, go calm myself down, go watch Sports Center, um, go grab the kids, and when we lived in California, go to Disneyland. I don't know, but leave her alone. You can correct me if I'm wrong, the trade spouses, but what really helped Samantha was when I said, you know what, I'm going to work on me. I can't control you. I'm going to listen to you. I, I will take a beating when I need to. I will do whatever you need to feel safe, but I'm going to work on me. And when I just gave her grace, and when I just let her kind of be, and when I just hammered away at building my recovery, and surrendered to how powerless I was to change her, rush her, convince her to see me differently, convince her to see that I had changed, stop talking about how much you've changed, and show them how much you've changed. Control is an illusion. It will not work. If you're a betrayed spouse, let me help you. If you try and mom your spouse into recovery, it'll backfire. The best thing that you can do is if they don't want to work their recovery, then you're going to have to pull back and you're going to have to administer consequences. It doesn't mean that you mom them and say, okay, honey, because you haven't done A, B, and C, now you get, you know, D, E, and F. No, it's simply saying, well, look, I, I, you're not getting any recovery work done. You're not doing anything. You're not showing me that you're desperate and you want to work at this. So, um, you know. Maybe a separation. Maybe you're not sleeping in the same bed. Maybe you're not having physical intimacy. Maybe they need to sleep in the guest room. I don't know. But instead of trying to control them, you simply have to empower yourself and administer maybe some consequences to protect yourself. Because you do have an element of, of impact and control within the aspect that you don't have to be addicted to them. If they're not okay, you can still be okay. But you, you can't try and control their recovery, it'll only backfire.